Hi everyone. So last video we did some background work on Mozart and then talked in some detail about his life in Salzburg. Today we should have a less intensive lecture on Mozart's time in Vienna and the end of his life. The final video of this Mozart bio series will be about his musical style and contributions, so make sure to keep an eye out for that. Let's remind ourselves of Mozart's dates. 56 to 91, it's a very short life. We ended the last video when Mozart quits his job working for Colorado in 81, so we only have about a decade left to work with. But remember that it's Mozart, so what he does in this decade is what would take most people several lifetimes to complete. Vienna period, 81 to 91. Again, we're tracking with the last decade of Mozart's life. Vienna is currently Austria's biggest city, its national capital. Just as with Salzburg, though, I'm not going to get into its history since it's just too dense. Again, I really encourage you to go and do some research of your own on the city. Its city center is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It's also on the list of World Heritage in Danger. It's known as the City of Music, also as the City of Dreams. It's just this very, very culturally important city. For Mozart, Vienna became his new home in 1781 after things went sideways with Colorado. He moves to Vienna hoping to get a job in the court of Emperor Joseph II, the oldest son of Maria Theresa and the brother of Marie Antoinette. He does end up getting a job, but it's a little further down the line and we'll get into that later. When he gets to Vienna, Mozart works as a freelance pianist, teacher, composer, generalized musician, and he's very successful at it, but because he's horrible with money, he has a bunch of financial problems, and this is an issue that would follow him throughout the rest of his life. Mozart gets a court commission early on to write an opera, and what he produces is this work called The Abduction from the Seraglio, which was a German comic opera, or a Singspiel. Mozart is taken by this group of sisters from the Weber family as well. Uh, they were talented singers. The eldest was named Josepha and was Mozart's first queen of the night in the magic flute. He courted another named Aloysia who sang in the Vienna premiere of Don Giovanni and he ended up marrying the youngest shown on your screen, Constance. Mozart's dad didn't approve of this marriage and that caused even more tension between Wolfgang and Leopold. But Constance and Wolfgang got married anyways in 1782. They seemed to be happy together at least at times, but apparently both were kind of flirty and terrible with money as well, and that's probably not a great combination in a marriage. Very weirdly, after Mozart died, Constance married this guy named von Nissen, who ended up becoming Mozart's biographer. Maybe it's just me, but I found that pretty weird. Wolfgang and Constance have six kids, only two of which survived, quite tragically. There's some differing accounts as to when Mozart and Haydn first met. The RCM seems to say 1781, but I think that's just wrong. Uh, more likely from what I've seen, it's either 83 or 84. Either way, it's during this time period and the two become good pals, and Mozart writes a bunch of string quartets dedicated to his older friend. 1784, Mozart becomes a Freemason. Now, I don't really know much about the Masons, so I'm not really qualified to talk about them. I'll let you do your own research. Uh, his dad, Leopold and Haydn, also become Masons. 86, we get the premiere, the very successful premiere of my favorite opera, Figaro. And here's the big piece of trivia you really have to remember for this exam. The librettist is a guy named Lorenzo da Ponte. Sear that into your mind, Lorenzo da Ponte. 1787, Don Giovanni premieres in Prague, again, a very successful opening. And that same year, he's appointed the Imperial Court Chamber Music Composer in the Court of Emperor Joseph II. That is that is a niche title. It's said that in 1787, he meets a young Ludwig von Beethoven who performed for him, and Mozart was pretty impressed, uh, which, you know, that's pretty high praise given that Mozart was the keyboardist in all of Europe. 1791, Mozart's last year. He's commissioned to write a requiem by this guy named Count Franz von Walsig, and it seems like von Walsig was going to take the completed work and pawn it off as his own composition. Uh, von Walsig had done this in the past with other music. Well, thankfully, this doesn't happen, and Mozart gets credit for the work. Uh, at, at least, we give him credit for the work now. But the Requiem was not completed until after Mozart died. His student, Franz Xavier Sussmeier, completed the work from sketches left by his teacher who had then passed away. Well, 1791, things are pretty bad for Mozart. His savings have been bled nearly dry. His health is deteriorating fast, despite his young age. His incredibly young age. And nevertheless, he keeps writing. We've already touched on the Requiem, but he also composed the Magic Flute. 
Uh, another piece of trivia here for the exam. Libretto was written by a guy named Emmanuel Schikanader, who was also a director and impresario. Magic Flute, very successful, as you can expect. Uh, in keeping with an important part of Mozart's identity, it also bears a number of hidden references to the Masons and their rituals. He also writes The Clemency of Titus, a two-act opera seria commissioned for the coronation of Leopold II of king, as king of Bohemia. There's a bunch of other music that he writes in, during this period. This I say period, it's really the last year of his life. And it's just incredible that somebody is producing this much content when he is this unhealthy. He does die... On the 5th of December, 1791, he dies a poor man. He's given an inexpensive funeral and buried in an unmarked grave at St. Mark's Cemetery in Vienna. However, there is now a memorial to him in that cemetery, and that's what you see on your screen. And that's it for the second of these Mozart or the second of these Mozart bio lectures. So make sure to stay tuned for the final one, which is about Mozart's musical style and contributions. If you found this lecture helpful at all, please uh, give it a thumbs up and consider hitting the subscribe button as it really helps out the channel. Thanks.